first major excursion was to the Coochie Tunnels. Once they were a huge underground bunker system for the Viet Cong. Now they're a sort of theme park for tourists, celebrating the communist victory over the West. Anyways, one go up. It is a hammock trap. Uh, almost like the hammock. And when soon to step on, you see what happens. That's okay? <laughs> ah, she's very strong. That's okay. My American had to be beside two on the. Yeah, she's real heroes already. Yes, I'll try. Let me try. Let me try. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, try. try? Yes. All right. Yeah, never try, never know. I got a leg in. <laughs> huh? <All right. laughs> okay, see you. It's a tight squeeze. Yeah, oh, if you look through there, this is the type of stuff that we, we fought in. And if you have a look at it, right, and just see the distance that you can see, right, which isn't very far, 15 metres or something like that, before something happened. So you didn't know where, you, you're right on top of it when it happened. And, uh, it was very nerve-wracking. Oh, well, wasn't that fun? Yeah, I guess possibly maybe they go down, down the stairs. I wouldn't make a VC. And then this is what we, what we went through every day and fought in. And, uh, it's um, a very short distance before something can come at you. Oh. But this this part here got to me when we started walking through here. Yeah, yeah. I, I just keep keep looking to the left and the right. <laughs> I can't help it. No. I, I was I was panicking like shit. I really was. You know I. Um, my stomach was so knotted that I felt really crook. It was the constant pressure of concentrating all day. Well, we didn't talk. We, we whispered or we used field signals you know, for, for four weeks at a time. Watching for every sign anything, anything that was different. The old fair one's coming back. Hmm? Mm. The old fair one's coming back. Yeah, so yeah, listening for rustling. Yeah, yeah. From, 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 from. I'll be actually, I'll be clipping it right out of here. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I couldn't handle it. Uh -huh. I thought I might have been able to, although I was worried about going because I thought I wouldn't be able to handle it. And then I thought, well, hey, you know, uh, there's nothing to really worry about this time. But it's just that, uh -huh. Sort of um, just all came back and and uh, caught me off guard. Actually, mm. I'm sorry about this.
you, you have to take your shoes off yeah. to go in. Yeah. Ah, well, there you go. I'm not going in. Why? Take a picture, don't you? I don't. I don't walk in bare feet. On the tiles? Not on nothing. Oh, all right. Not at home. Oh, no, no, you got to take your. You have to take your shoes off to go in. Uh, the reason why I never take my boots off is because when I was in the army in Vietnam, you can't take off your boots. You have to leave them on all night, so you're uh, come under fire. You're ready to react uh, instantly. I take off my boots when I go into the bath. I, I put them on as soon as I get out. I take them off just as I climb into bed, and they're the first thing I've got on in the morning. I never take them off, but I didn't realize that was, was why until just now. I haven't been in the water since 1975 because I associate with the monsoon season. Yeah, I haven't <laughs> been in the water since, um, nine, since 1971. Bloody strange, isn't it? Yeah, yeah since 1971, mate. <laughs> About this time, it seemed as if Sam were losing his fear of people. And we all thought we could relax and enjoy being tourists. So the next day, we set off happily on a long boat trip. Whooping it up with fellow backpackers had been a highlight of Brian's trip six months earlier. You spend all day floating around in the South China Sea in a, in a rubber tyre, you can drink as much beer as you want and eat as much food, and uh, it's just one giant party. While the holiday magic worked for the others, it had the opposite effect on Sam. I don't know how I got on the boat. I don't don't know at all. I, I, I was trembling so much. And I, and I couldn't move. As soon as I sat down, I said, that, uh, Sam, you're going to look really strange. You don't disappear. Don't attract attention. Get, get a book out and, and try to turn the, the pages. I, I was scared. Uh, I was trapped. Only way I, I could get away was going in. Sam spent eight hours on this bench, rigid with fear, not of the water, but of the crowds. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tourists, Anglo tourists. No, I'm not afraid of the Vietnamese. I'm home. I'm, ho I'm home now. Vietnamese tried to kill me, and they failed in that, but they did succeed in, in uh, mangling my body. Uh, but it's when I came home where it was the, the, the people and the governments uh, that I had dealings with that mangled my soul. And not just 20 years ago, 25 years ago. Uh, today, this very day, it, it's uh, the, the people at, uh, uh, at home, my, my neighbors. More than anything, Sam wanted to return to Dak To, where he'd been wounded in battle and left for dead for three days. When we got down to the airfield, no sign of the camp whatsoever. The, the women had taken over the airstrip to clean, cut up and dry their cassava harvest. Right over there, that was called the uh, Battle of the Slopes, and uh, Alpha Company of our 2nd Battalion was just about wiped wipe out. And, uh, they weren't, huh? 
Most of the dead weren't caught in battle, they were just wounded soldiers that had been executed. defense position roughly circular and they just kept coming and coming and coming and oh, I was uh, drenched in blood some my own mostly not and one North Vietnamese soldier spotted me and, and uh, he was only about five meters away and uh, he kept shooting at me in, in short bursts and uh, he stopped firing and I jumped up and ran at him I saw uh, a red and black flash. I saw the pieces of steel coming at me. E everything went uh, went black, and uh, I heard my platoon sergeant calling for me. Hilt, tell Hilt to get over here. And one of the blokes called back, Hilt's dead. All I could say was, uh, thank Christ, I had enough of that.